from the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast. The Secretary of Ag tours flooded fields, plus planning progress updates and agribusiness breaking down the Kansas Wheat Tour. I think the Wheat Tour was inconclusive. Dairy producers watch new immigration legislation in Washington and raise the curtain on a fresh approach to farm theater. Ag Day, brought to you by the dependable, longest lasting Chevy Silverado. Good morning, I'm Clinton Griffiths. Flooding concerns continue along some of the nation's biggest rivers and its tributaries. USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue is pledging assistance. Ag Secretary Perdue taking a tour of flooding conditions in Arkansas over the weekend. The Secretary, along with Governor Asa Hutchinson, taking in a bird's eye view. Now, as we've been reporting, some fields are covered in six to eight feet of water. The University of Arkansas is estimating the flooding is impacting 937,000 acres of the state's cropland with losses tallying up to $64.5 million. Now, Purdue says the Department of Ag is ready to help. Uh, we'll do everything in our power, Governor, to uh, make sure that your farmers can continue on. Uh, certainly, uh, crop insurance is a big part of that and uh, we want them to take advantage of all those kinds of resources from the USDA. Purdue also saying he wants farmers to continue to grow crops and he takes it very seriously that his responsibility is to sell those crops all over the world as a safe, abundant food supply. You know, it was heavy rains about a week ago that flooded fields throughout the Midwest. Planted crops were underwater and farmers were on hold waiting for things to dry out. USDA's crop progress this week, it's the first chance we have to get a feel for the national impact on planting progress. USDA says corn planting is now 47% complete. That's five points behind the five-year average. In the three I states, Illinois and Indiana both remain ahead of the five-year average, even though there was less than one day suitable for field work last week. Iowa corn planting is three points behind schedule. Minnesota, 20 points behind the five-year average. Now nationally, 15% of the crop has emerged. Meanwhile, light corn, soybeans also falling behind the five-year average last week. Soybean planting is now 14% done. It's normally 17% complete by now. Down south, planters are by and large running ahead of schedule. The further you go north, the slower the progress. Following blizzard-like conditions in the southern plains, the winter wheat crop now rated 53% good to excellent. That's down just 1% from a week ago. Half of the crop is now headed four points ahead of the five-year average. This is what scouts saw in western Kansas during last week's winter wheat tour. That tour put wheat yields for fields expected to be harvested down 40 percent from 2016 with a statewide average of 46 bushels to the acre, roughly 282 million bushels in all. However, agronomists and scouts say there could be more acres abandoned depending on how fields come out of the recent snowfall. So this year was a very challenging year. We reached out the 282 here and I think that's a fair uh, number for us to be at right now. But again, depending on what the situation is going to be in western Kansas, with, after all that snow, it can be 235 or it can be 310, right? If we look at the long-term average, that we are at 300, 310, I think we're safe assuming that we're slightly below that. So I think that that was a safe assumption. Now, depending on the fate of the crop in western Kansas, it can be, uh, we still have a pretty big range where we can be at this year. We'll have more on the tour and wheat prices coming up in analysis. While the crop condition is a worry at home, some U.S. wheat growers are concerned about the trade picture overseas. According to Politico, CEO of the National Association of Wheat Growers, Chandler Gould, says the Trump administration must have a sense of urgency. On the trade front or other big wheat players like Russia, Ukraine and Argentina could fill the markets U.S. producers need. If you want cheap, dirty grain, you can go to Russia. If you want good quality grain, you come to the United States. And so as long as we can maintain that status, we'll be doing good. But again, it comes back to, um, it comes back to engagement in this farm bill by our producers. And it comes back to the Trump administration. If they're not going to let us have TPP, uh, when are they going to announce the first bilateral? Uh, I'm asking them now, who's it going to be with? And we're still looking at a four to six year time frame. We've got to start working on those today. Speaking of markets and trade, agriculture getting the attention of lawmakers during the Senate Agriculture Committee's Farm Bill field hearing in Michigan over the weekend. But the reality is we're going to have to do more with less. That's just the way it is. Senate Ag Chairman Pat Roberts and Ranking Democrat Debbie Stabenow listening to testimony from producers and leading ag officials in the state. Now, some of the key points at the hearing 
include the possibility of increasing funds for the 2018 Farm Bill, how well crop insurance safety nets are working, international development, and finding a reliable ag workforce. Labor continues to be our number one issue on our farm. And I must say, there is no insurance for no labor. A solution to this problem must come sooner than later. I've personally witnessed crops wasting away on trees because the producer wasn't able to secure a domestic workforce. Stabenow said in her remarks, ag is the state's second largest industry, supporting one out of every four jobs. Some pockets of the Western Corn Belt got a chance to dry out over the weekend. Mike Hoffman has an update. Good morning, Clinton. Our first photo comes from Southeast South Dakota. This producer says while the fields are still a little wet, several did start to plant on Monday. The weather is quite a change from over a week ago when snow blanketed this area. But some areas could still use a, a dry down. Here's a photo taken Sunday in Peru, Illinois. As you can see, some flat fields are still covered in water. And taking a look at the weather map, you can see some systems moving across the country. None of these are huge or very wet systems, but there's just a lot of nuisance rain out there. We'll talk more about that with your forecast. But first, here are some hometown tips. Here's the secret to selling old equipment. Pete's Pick of the Week lets you easily view current market prices. Just text PETE6 to 31313 to get started. We'll continue our We Tour conversation after the break, including how markets may be looking at the recent numbers, and later take a trip to the theater. These Tennessee farmers are hoping it could be good for your health. I'm Betsy Gibbon. Mother Nature finally gave farmers in eastern Iowa a good window to plant. We'll have that story tomorrow on our I-80 planting tour in eastern Iowa on Ag Day. Visit FarmJournalPro.com. Trusted analysis, professional insight. FarmJournalPro.com. Hi guys, today we're here to talk about the Chevy Silverado Special Edition. Awesome. What's your first impression? It looks sick. This is one gorgeous truck. Oh, did I say there was only one Special Edition? Because actually there's five. Holy <laughs> 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 nice. Strength and style. Which one's your favorite? <laughs> Come home with me. Introducing the Chevy Silverado Special Editions. Oh, Ed, what are we presenting? That Credenz soybeans are designed using smart genetics. Look, state-of-the-art breeding advances the best germplasm. Plus, tailored varieties for any field conditions with choice in herbicide-tolerant traits. And Credenz soybeans come back by Bayer's ongoing innovation. Want increased yields and ROI? Plant the smarter soybean. Talk to an authorized Credenz retailer or discover the right Credenz variety at credenz.bayer.us. Always read and follow label instructions. This March, wildfires whipped across Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, and Colorado. None of us ever thought that, that the fire had this breadth and scope to it and that it could do what it did. The flames consumed ranches, thousands of miles of fencing, homes, livestock, and the lives of brave ranchers. I actually think in the eyes of those who were affected, it's worse now than it was when it was burning because now they know how bad it is and they know how hard it is going to be to come back from that. Farmers from across the country are now helping these ranchers rebuild with hay, fencing, friendship and labor. But more is needed and you can help. The Howard G. Buffett Foundation has teamed up with the Farm Journal Foundation to match $1 million in relief. To find out how you can help, visit wildfirereliefund.org. That's wildfirereliefund.org. Grains were in the red early Monday. Let's see how markets closed from the floor of the CME. Generally stronger day in both the cattle and the hogs. Uh, cattle responding finally to the, uh, to the fact that there were some pretty fancy prices paid for cattle last week. $145 to $148 was paid in some parts of the, of the Great Plains. And that's a full $10, up to $10 uh, more than was paid the previous week. That's created some, uh, that created some selling interest on Friday because of uh, some long liquidation on the part of the speculators, but the futures are starting to rebound today and closed on a firm note here for a Monday. Hog market also trading higher. 
uh, finding uh, good support from the cash market that has been firm, if not exactly running away like the cattle market, but definitely trading on a firm note. And uh, even though there's plenty of hogs out there, there seems to be the demand to take up the slack, and uh, that's kept prices firm. Thanks very much. This is Jack Scoville. I'm Vice President of Price Futures Group here on the CME Group floor with some comments for the markets. As I mentioned, the Kansas Wheat Tour wrapped up late last week, but there are still a lot of unknowns in the final tally. Tyne Morgan joins us from the Agribusiness Desk with more. Tyne? Here now with Joe Vaklovic of Standard Grain. Joe, we saw the Kansas Wheat Tour take place last week. It happened on the heels of a massive snowstorm. Mm -hmm. So really, when you think about the Wheat Tour overall, how accurate is it going to be when we have this damage that you really couldn't account for? I think the Wheat Tour was inconclusive. I think the people who participated in the wheat tour would probably be the first ones to tell you that there was just such a big portion of the western part of the state which was the most heavily damaged part of the state when it comes to snow and freezing temperature and, and just really adverse conditions they just didn't get the samples that they needed so i, I think it's going to be a while until the the real level of damage is assessed and until we have a better feel for what's possible from a production standpoint but when that final number came out of kansas i mean we saw wheat prices going to the dumps and it took a massive fall. Was it just because of those findings and that uh, it showed that maybe the wheat crop wasn't as bad as what some has, had expected or were there other forces that played into that huge downturn in price? I think that has something to do with it. I think it also has something to do with the grander scheme uh, money flow type okay. type factors. Funds have been short this wheat market forever. They've been able to roll into a carry for months and months and months. It's been like an annuity that just pays for them every year. So like, like we talked about on, on the earlier segment, it's going to be something that uh, it's going to be difficult to shake the, the shorts out of this wheat market, I think. All right. I mean, how much damage do we need to see um, to really impact this market when we are setting a, on a ton of old crop wheat, not just from last year, the year before, too? Well, that's the problem. The problem is that is that one, we've got way too much wheat in this country that two, we don't make the world market for wheat anymore like we used to. There are other bigger players that are doing more export business than us, and it's just the demand base just isn't there, uh, even if we're competitive. It just seems like the Black Sea region continues to just outdo us in terms of, of uh, exports and things of that nature. So it's just difficult for us to find any footing here. All right, thanks so much, Joe. Stay with us. We'll have a much more ag day when we come back. For more information about Standard Grain and its services, call Joe at 312-462-4438. Get the roots your crops need by getting Radiate first. Visit lovelandproducts.com slash radiate. See your CPS dealer today. Attention, if you were exposed to Roundup Weed Killer for a year or more and developed non-Hodgkin lymphoma, you may be entitled to money damages. Call 800-843-7500 for a free consultation. That's 800-843-7500. Call now, 800-843-7500. Everybody has a flashlight, but can your flashlight do this? The Bell & Howell Tactical Flashlight can. The Bell & Howell Tac Light can do things no ordinary flashlight can do. Look, this civilian flashlight puts out pathetic light. But our military-grade tack light, that's 22 times as bright. You can get a Bell & Howell tack light complete with a lifetime guarantee for just $19.99, plus free shipping. And while supplies last, you can even get a second one. Just pay a separate fee. Attention, if you were exposed to Roundup Weed Killer for a year or more and developed non-Hodgkin lymphoma, you may be entitled to money damages. Call 800-843-7500 for a free consultation. That's 800-843-7500. Call now, 800-843-7500. Every successful grower knows that the best crops need strong roots, and that means they need Radiate Plant Growth Regulator. Radiate features two powerful active ingredients that help young crops quickly develop the longer, healthier roots they need for more nutrient uptake, early vigor, and stress resistance. Applied either foliar or in furrow, Radiate makes all the difference for a wide variety of crops. So get the roots your crops need by getting Radiate first. See your CPS dealer today. Rust is destroying your valuable equipment and property. Rust Guy permanently stops rust with no scraping, grinding, or sandblasting. Brush, spray, or roll Rust Guy onto any rusted metal and it will not rust again. Rust Guy is not a paint, but an industrial strength formula that stops rust for good. It leaves a slick, rock hard finish that can be left as is or painted. Rust Guy protects from salt, manure, fertilizer, urine, and rain. 
Call 888-RUST-GUY to talk to a Rust expert or go to rustguy.com. Welcome back to Ag Day. Meteorologist Mike Hoffman. Mike, uh, as we were talking before we started here, it's kind of a weird looking map for this time of year, isn't you, it? Yeah, if you pay close attention, some things are moving west or northwest on this map. That's just how strange it is with the cutoff lows that we're seeing at the jet stream level. We'll take a look at that jet stream coming up. But right now, let's put the maps into motion. You'll notice this is the one low pressure system that's moving quickly. It's diving down the backside of a cutoff low, so it's going to move uh, quickly through Illinois and Indiana as we head through today. So the rain will be spreading into the central Appalachians by later in the day today. Just kind of a, a strip of uh, half to one inch rainfall amounts with areas north, uh, north uh, east and southwest of it not getting much at all. This system is going to kind of linger in the desert southwest. Some of the energy starts to come into the western plains as we head into the uh, day, well, let's say tomorrow night and on into Wednesday. But uh, all in all, we're not uh, talking a ton of rain quite yet with it, but with a slow mover like this, we'll have to watch that as that comes eastward, how much golf moisture does that pick up. Heading toward tomorrow morning, then you can see some showers and thunderstorms starting to break out, out ahead of it. Western, uh, northern, northwestern Texas on into uh, parts of the Missouri Valley. And as we head through the day tomorrow, this system is way offshore into the Atlantic. The uh, system sitting over the Atlantic is actually moving northwestward into Maine with some showers. And this system very slowly moving into the northwestern Great Lakes with a few showers as well. So we do start to moisten this system up here. It does look like when you look at the jet stream that it'll eventually kind of fold eastward into the eastern cutoff low. So again, a very strange system or a very strange situation uh, like uh, Clinton pointed out. There's the jet stream estimate past 24 hours. Look at that narrow strip of half to one inch rainfall amounts <clears throat> heading toward the uh, southeast over the next 36 hours. Then that moves into the central Appalachians just in a small area. Now this system does start to moisten up as we head through the day uh, tomorrow, or let's say over the next 36 hours. And we are looking at one to two inch amounts in some areas with that. All depends on where the heavier thunderstorms hit. Still showing the snowfall map. There's not a whole lot going on, but you will notice over the next 36 hours will add a little bit to the highest elevations, Colorado and northern New Mexico. Take a look at highs today into the 80s all the way up into a southern Iowa, central Illinois, but it's only in the 40s around the Great Lakes. That's been the case most of the weekend and uh, early part of this week already. Lows tonight, uh, 60s for much of the southern portions of the uh, the Corn Belt, but you can see off to the northeast, still 30s and 40s across the Great Lakes. Highs tomorrow, more of the same, although it does try to warm up a little bit into the northern plains as well with some 60s showing back up. Jet stream as we uh, start the week. There's a cutoff over the northeast. Start the, uh, the cutoff over the uh, northwestern portions of Mexico, southwestern U.S. You can see how that eventually kind of folds eastward and comes into the big eastern trough by the time we head toward this weekend. But you, basically, we're still talking a ridge through most of the middle of the country, which is warm, and we're still talking cutoffs west and east. That's a look across the country. Now let's take a look at some local forecasts. First of all, for Spokane, Washington, partly sunny and quite comfortable today, high of 72 degrees. Lufkin, Texas, good deal of sunshine and warm with a high of 85. And Kalamazoo, Michigan, cool with clouds and some sunshine, high around 57 degrees. When we come back, we'll look at the dairy market, including movements in Washington policy that could impact farmers. Plus, I'm Charles Denny, some Tennessee producers acting out. You'll have a front row seat to farm theater and hear the message from their performance. That story coming up on Ag Day. Join the campaign to help victims of the wildfires, just like the Howard G. Buffett Foundation. The organization has pledged to match dollar to dollar up to $1 million in relief funds. To learn more, go to wildfirerelieffund.org. The full line of Ram ProMaster work vans offer better fuel economy. Upfits tailored to fit your business. Greater cargo capacity. And easier access to your workspace. Ram ProMaster and ProMaster City let you maximize every hour, minute, and second even more effectively. Now, competitive commercial van owners or lessees are eligible for these incentives on the 2017 Ram ProMaster or ProMaster City. At BASF, we know one thing is certain. When you're the inventors of dicamba, you don't advance it by just dropping in an additive. You wipe the slate clean and rebuild a better dicamba 
from the ground up. Presenting Ingenia Herbicide, the most flexible and advanced dicamba for dicamba tolerant soybeans and cotton. It's pure genius. Your tools don't need to come in flashy colors. Your mower shouldn't either. Whether you roll it off the trailer or out of the garage, a grasshopper gives you the no excuses, get it done kind of attitude that drives your day. Grab the controls and get the power to tackle tough terrain with the speed to cut your mowing time in half. Trim, vacuum, mulch, and more. All from a driver's seat that's as comfortable as your favorite pair of faded jeans. The exclusive powerful deck even makes cleanup and storage a snap. So whether you're a pro or just want to mow like one, make your next mower a grasshopper mower. You've committed to doing all you can to increase your yields and grow your bottom line. Like using Stratego Yield Fungicide and its two modes of action for unbeatable control of the major foliar soybean diseases, you'll get an average yield increase of three to four bushels per acre. Healthier fields means higher yields. You're ready to profit from the season with Stratego Yield. A bill introduced last week in the U.S. Senate would give farm workers a path to legal status and citizenship. The legislation allowing undocumented farm workers who have worked in agriculture for at least 100 days in each of the previous two years were able to earn a blue card, which would allow them to work legally. They would eventually be eligible for a green card or permanent residency, which opens the door to earning citizenship. Last week, we told you about Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue's decision to adjust school meal standards, including bringing back flavored 1% milk. Well, now seven of the largest school districts in the U.S. are banding together, announcing they will not relax their school meal standards. The district's organizing as the Urban School Food Alliance. With a combined enrollment of 3.1 million students, that spend nearly $600 million a year on food and supplies. They include New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, Miami-Dade County, Florida, Orange County, Florida, and Broward County in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Now the group plans to continue reducing sodium levels, increase whole grain foods up to 100 percent, and serve only non-fat flavored milk rather than 1 percent milk. Also in Washington, there continues to be a push to limit the term milk to beverages that come from animals and not plants. Democratic U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin introducing the dairy-friendly legislation. Although not everyone in agriculture is on board, the American Soybean Association spokesman Patrick Delaney, he says people who decide to purchase an alternative to dairy milk know the difference. He said soybean farmers have been getting into that milk market because of demand. When we come back, we'll turn the lights on a theatrical performance from a group of farmers. Why did they take the stage? Details straight ahead. How can I help you today? Yeah, I need to file a claim. My uh, central air stopped working and needs to be replaced. Oh, sorry, your homeowner's insurance doesn't cover air conditioners. So what do you cover? Well, home damage from things like earthquakes, volcanoes, a zombie apocalypse. Zombie apocalypse. Covered. <laughs> but not my air conditioner. Mm -mm. But his air conditioner would have been covered with a home warranty from American Home Shield, plus major components of 20 other home systems and appliances, like his electrical system, plumbing, oven, refrigerator, washer, water heater, and more. Homeowners insurance can cover what might happen. Zombies are coming! <laughs> but a home warranty from award-winning American Home Shield helps cover what will happen. Now the dryer won't work. Life happens. Have a plan. Get a home warranty from American Home Shield. For valuable free information, call 1 800 954 9639. This is a national health alert from the 24 7 Diabetic Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one has diabetes, we have important news. If you lost your supplier or if you need one, you may qualify to receive diabetic testing supplies now with little or no out of pocket cost, regardless of your age. All you need is Medicare or private insurance to potentially be eligible. Call the 24 7 Diabetic Health Hotline now for details. Toll free at this number. Get free, no obligation information, free delivery to your door, and all the insurance paperwork is handled by our accredited agents for free. Call right now and you will also receive a free pedometer as our special gift to you. Regardless of your age, if you or a loved one needs diabetic supplies and you have Medicare or private insurance, we can help. 
Call the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline at 1-800-634-8201. That's 1-800-634-8201. In the Country, brought to you by Kubota. Check out Kubota's RTVX 1140, a rugged utility vehicle with seating for four. Stop by your local dealer today or visit Kubota.com. It's not a combination you hear often, farming and theater, but some Tennessee producers are climbing on stage as actors to tell others about their profession, both the good and the bad. UT Extension teamed with the University of Kentucky to host a farm theater tour in several towns. Charles Denny raises the curtain on one performance. Oh, I better give Jan a call. She has me on the schedule. I told her I'd be working up on the knob this morning. Ray County farmer Harold Fisher is playing a version of himself. He's one of the actors in this farm theater program. Other producers joined him on stage and in the audience for three skits. There were plenty of funny lines, but also more serious talk about issues farmers face stress, occupational hazards, and health and aging. But some of the script is, you know, the scary part, it fits me to a T. I have trouble hearing and, and a lot of other folks have trouble hearing, but, uh, but it's, it's exciting, it's interesting to do. I kept pushing buttons and that thing just kept beeping at me. No need to memorize lines, the actors read from a script. But the importance here is not on performance, but message. UT Extension helped coordinate this near sellout event in Evansville. Skits that we're going to be doing are actually based upon actual accounts that producers have had uh, in farm safety accidents. And so hopefully they'll learn uh, something tonight and apply that on their own farm. The farm theater was started by the University of Kentucky's College of Nursing. Using grant money, administrators did research with farmers in Kentucky and Tennessee and then later wrote the script based on these stories and interviews. What would make you stop and think about things on the farm? And they said, well, if, if we listen to each other, because they learn from each other's stories about what almost happened to Joe down the road or what did happen to Harry, you know, up the road. So we thought, okay, stories are good. A gerontologist by trade and a childhood in agriculture, UK's Dr. Deborah Reed designed the farm theater. She leads a discussion after each skit with advice about safety, and mental and physical health. And as you begin to age, farmers are just people like everybody else, so they have issues with arthritis, they have issues with hearing loss, they have issues with cataracts, fatigue, trying to multitask. I know Jake's daddy, how'd he take it? He wasn't too happy. In theater, when you wish someone good luck on stage, you say, break a leg. Of course, you don't want that in farming, literally speaking. But when an actor speaks, especially one who's really lived the plot, it's a performance any audience can appreciate. And cut. This is Charles Denny reporting. All right, thanks, Charles. And that's all the time we have this morning. I'm sure glad you tuned in. Start your day with us. For Mike Hoffman, Betsy Chippen, and all of us here at Ag Day, I'm Clinton Griffiths. Have a great day. Ag Day is powered by Ram Trucks, America's longest-lasting pickups.